because I have to come over and start this Zoom thing. And then, so you tell me when to move down. And I'm going to tell you to go over there. If it wasn't the technology, I don't know what we did. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I did that. Yeah. Oh, okay. I got to make sure. Okay, launch. I'll get out of the way in just a second. I'll run. Yeah. I'll have a Where do you go? Yeah. Oh, I'm going to Bot. 
It was done for John S. Hopkins. John S. Hopkins had lived in Evansville in 1820, and he hired Emil Bott, the artist, to paint his memories of the city in his younger days in 1820. And this is what he comes up with. You see the Rock River Bank in the town, uh, then on the banks of the Ohio. Uh, however, it really more looked like this without the 1850s riverboats. <laughs> now, why Neil Bob chose to put those in there, I don't know. Although John S. Hopkins did own a riverboat company, so maybe he liked the riverboats and walked them in there. I don't know. I'm just conjecturing and guessing for fun. Uh, but it would have looked more like this. And if you look at this, uh, down at Main Street, uh, which is basically the center of this, would be Hugh McGarry's spot, his warehouses there, early port was taking place there. And in the distance, you can see in the very far distance, the center of, uh, of the painting, there is a red structure. That would have been our first little courthouse, basically, where the National City Bank eventually is up there on 3rd and Main Street building. That building is not there. The National City Bank building is still there. But uh, our first purpose built courthouse, uh, and it would have been there by, by this point. So Evansville in 1820. So that's one of our really early looks at what the riverfront looked like. You know, pretty steep, you know, uh, earthen banks going up uh, to the first street, which in earlier days is known as Water Street as opposed to uh, river, Riverside Drive that we so know, know well today. <coughs> that was until 1856. And as you go along, you see the population of the city. And in 1830, there were 346 people here, or were very small. 1840, we had a pretty good growth spurt in that era. In 1850, it over doubles again. So Evans will become a warehousing uh, spot, a little bit of uh, things they constructed here, but it's becoming a river port uh, along the way, along the Ohio River, and as people head towards the Mississippi River. So Evansville is evolving, and as that is happening, we're also going to see that uh, the use of the river is evolving. Uh, Evansville is going to be the terminus of the Wabash and Erie Canal. And this is one of the few renditions uh, where you can see the Wabash and Erie Canal coming through uh, the city itself. And <coughs> laser pointer was not working, and so I'm just going to wander over here as best I can. So the Wabash and Erie Canal coming on through, which as probably most of you know, I don't know if feel fate is the right word, but, but short lived to be sure. Uh, it's completed, and, and very shortly on, in the early 1850s, railroads start running north out of Evansville. And railroads much more efficient, convenient, uh, just economically more viable than the, than the canal. Uh, the canal gets some use, but not a lot. Uh, the bank records take back in the 1830s when they started out building it, but the early 1850s. Uh, it is completed, but again, uh, it, it doesn't, in the end, have a lot of use as the railroads come along. Uh, but you can see by the 1850s, now these are listed views of riverboats on, on the Ohio. Uh, we become a river port, a stopping point along the ventures from Louisville, Cincinnati. Uh, you can get on down the river then from here to Cairo, Illinois, uh, Cairo, Illinois, I'm <laughs> sorry, Cairo, Illinois, and on down. Uh, so it, uh, Evansville's evolving, and the river is a major part of that, a location here on the Ohio River. That's what McGarry had envisioned, us being a, a, a substantial river point. He doesn't really live to see that, but it does start to evolve in that direction, certainly by the 1850s. The promise of the canal, even though it doesn't really eventually lead to much, the promise of that canal and also the location of a state bank branch here in Evansville in this era is really helping spur its growth. Uh, that was the, the state bank of Indiana, which eventually falls in what is still today with the National Bank. But those two things, I think, economically really spurred on Evansville in the 1830s, 1840s, and as we get to 1850. By 1850, we have a wharf boat. That is basically your bus station or your airport where the river boats would dock and disembark uh, cargo, would disembark uh, 
craft and those that came into the city in a wharf boat. And we'll have a wharf boat from uh, this era up till 1936. By 36, it's not being used that much, but it is still there. So that's going to be a long-standing situation on, uh, on the Ohio River. This is basically down at Maine and Riverside, uh, if we think about it in 2022 terms, uh, in, in that location. Uh, the war boat. This is the first rendition. There were later versions of that. They get bigger and more expansive. We'll also see that the river boats will dock at various places along the river bank, just not the war boat. But this is a major stopping point. Uh, we also have uh, a number of boats running in and out of Evansville, such as the Idlewild. Uh, it's going to Cairo, it's going to Paducah, and uh, Golconda. Uh, so you can see Evansville is going to be sort of the center of a lot of this happening. Uh, during during this era. Uh, and so this is only going to be spurred by the Civil War. Now, the Civil War is a terrible thing by you know any estimation, uh, but Evansville's and its spot along the river is certainly going to be something that is a, uh, that is going to be important to its growth during this time period. And Evansville is going to basically uh, become a, a spot where Civil War wounded from battles in the south, such as Shiloh or Fort Donaldson or Fort Henry, are going to be brought to Evansville along the river and convalesce here. Uh, there are temporary Civil War hospitals set up here uh, in our city. Uh, we have Oak Hill Cemetery, as I'm sure you know, has both Confederate and Union soldiers buried there. Uh, they're dying in hospitals here and being buried. Uh, along the way, and this is uh, a rendition of what Evans might have looked at, uh, looked like during this period by a man by the name of William Mongerer, who was sitting at the bottom of, well, then coal mine, the old Bright Hill, and you can see the little rails running out, bringing coal out uh, of that hill during that era, and he's looking over towards the downtown area which is dotted with church steeples and some smokestacks uh, during this era. And he wrote, what I sketched it, meaning this, this, this painting that he did, I was sitting by the old house, surrounded by all the paraphernalia of an exhausted coal mine, which is about a half mile distance. The boats in the river are Ohio River gunboats guarding the Ohio River in town against raids, which were then quite often undertaken opposite shore, which is Kentucky. This was the position of affairs when I arrived. The Celebration Henderson Kentucky raid had just occurred, and Evansville was full of soldiers and National Guards, many without uniforms and poorly armed, who had prepared in great haste to pursue the enemy. So Evansville was really, because of this location on the river in its proximity to Kentucky, not a Confederate state, but a lot of Confederate sympathizers, is going to be really hotbed of activity during the Civil War. And the river even makes that more so than our location on the Ohio River. We've jumped ahead about three decades here, and we are in the 1880s. And this is Water Street, Riverside Drive, sort of, in that area, known as Water Street. You can see the horse-drawn wagons, the various shops uh, along the way, uh, there's farmers markets. There are various things along the riverfront here. I think and you can't probably read where you're at, but one of these in, in the building in this building, well, you can maybe can't read. They're selling powder. And they're also selling liquor. I thought that's a good combination: <laughs> alcohol and gunpowder. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? <laughs> so, but but all kinds of things are being sold along the riverfront uh, in the 1880s. I mean. This is Evansville. I mean, Evansville starts at the riverfront and then moves outward from there. So when we're talking Evansville and what is Evansville, where people live and work and have businesses, that is the riverfront and then up Main Street and spreading out from there. So this is the heart of the city in the 1880s. And you can see we've reached a population by 1880 of 29,280. So the city is growing from its fairly early days of you know a few hundred people. It is growing, uh, and you can see we're in the era of horse and wagons, and it's called Water Street, sometimes even literal in that sense, water is in the street, 
uh, ask me to well, Tom, can I ask you? Of course. Because I live down at Dogtown, and our house is like on a riverbank, and it was up, you know, and then it floods even from that. But, and, and I thought the Dress Plaza, or whatever we call it now, it's filled up. But it was more flat, wasn't it? Because they built the levee. Yeah, what, with Dress Plaza, yes. Yeah, I mean, I mean the, the river was, it wasn't real steep. This bank, this bank is fairly steep here. Right. Yeah. It's sort of hard to see, but yeah. But it's not like it is now, where it's like. Yeah. Well, no, no, well, no, yeah, no, no. See, no. And there was not that separation like that. No, yeah, absolutely not. My mind has always been like that. So yeah. Out, yeah. And down here is the normally you know, water, simple water. So he would carry some cabin. He would have been able to just walk to the river. He would have been right there. Yes, he would have been right on that riverside. And, and make where Chad and I is uh, yeah. located, located today. Uh, so yes, that is uh, that is true. So I, I really I like this shot. This is actually is stereo optical, or stereo car view. So if you put the, the viewer on, you can see the three, so to speak. Uh, and so I always like this image. Now this is when Water Street turns into a street with water in it. This is 1884. Uh, the biggest flood to that time in Evansville. And the first really response by the Red Cross, the early Red Cross, one of its very early efforts is here in Evansville, and Clara Barton's headquarters are here in Evansville, it's sort of in the location of today's Deaconess Hospital down down that area is where she was is where she was living. But she comes, sets up relief headquarters here, and she had helped found the Red Cross in 1881. This is three year, years later. And Bart will take steamboats out of Evansville to go to various spots to assess what is happening and what relief needs to be occurring through the Red Cross. Uh, but you can see the challenges with no barrier between the city and the river. Now this is going to be a happenstance on a number of occasions. And in 1884 we see you know, pretty, pretty significant flooding going on in the city to the extent that Claire Bark and the Red Cross are here, and also throughout the Ohio Valley, there's quite a lot of flooding going on. This is 1888, so I'm pretend if you're standing here, you're standing at the Evansville Museum and looking towards uh, today's Dress Plaza, which should be down here, and you can see a little more of that gray uh, here. Okay. So there was a, a sawmill, lumber mill here, uh, at where the Evansville Museum is, but you can see riverboats uh, along the along the shore here, but even other places other than where the wharf is at, you can see they have planks out there coming in ashore. Uh, so that was what we were about. That, Tons of river commerce. Is that Morgan Manor or whatever that house? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. So the Amazon Museum started out as an old uh, house. It, it got knocked down, and another our museum came along a, a few years later, in the nineteen twenties. But that, yeah, that would be it. Uh, so that's the river in 18 in 1888 as things are continuing uh, to evolve in this in this era. This is just a year later, 1889. Just looking straight in, uh, and you can see that there are a number of smokestacks, industries coming along. We're going to have you know plow works and uh, machine works here in the city by this point. Uh, in 1889. The packet James Guthrie, the riverboat James Guthrie that you see there, uh, was constructed over Jeffersonville, Jeffersonville, Indiana, at the Howard uh, shipyards over there. And it carried mail, but also passengers and freight up around uh, the area around Evansville and uh, in our surrounding area. So you can see all the riverboats docked there. It was probably pretty amazing to see all that activity down there. The real core of what Evansville was back in this era. And this is basically where Ohio Street is today, um, Meet Johnson Terminal area, uh, in the, sort of beyond the, the Malzer Cross Stone Yard. A lot of hardwood came out of Evansville, or shipped out of Evansville, harvest all throughout southwestern Indiana, brought to the lumber district down in the basically Ohio Street area of today and then shipped to various places where we used furniture factories, which were quite numerous here in our city also. So, lots of activity, lots of things happening on the riverfront. Now this is, oops, sorry, we jumped ahead. 
This is 1891, record 50,000 people. So, you know, quite, quite, quite expanding during this, during this period of time. And you can again see all the riverboats. I think something that's interesting to consider with this is also, you know, these things are coal burners and all the coal smoke that's going in there. And if we're talking the dead of winter, we're talking houses are all burning coal, factories are all burning coal. So the quality of air was not only in Evansville, but in various industrial towns, you're going to be pretty challenged walking around with all the coal, soot, coal smoke blowing up into the air. But you can just see the congestion there on the riverfront in 1890 with just numerous craft coming and, and docking here uh, along, the, along the riverbank. So I, I've always liked that photograph too. I think it's really uh, very descriptive of what our city would have been like well over 100 years ago. And, and with the river, also comes the challenges of ice and flooding. Uh, but this is 1897, and this was shot by photographer William Reck. Uh, his family was a family of photographers. William Reck did a lot of photography. Then Ed Reck, in the early 20th century, documented the city to a great extent. But he documented this, out the Ohio River, people up on an ice forge that had formed. You know, this is before the days where there, there was a lot of locks and dams along the river that keep the levels higher in the river. As the river was lower, it had more chance to freeze and to allow this type of thing to happen, as happened in 1897. And the ice forge was about 50 miles in length. It was all jammed up and down. The river traffic was shut down. And there's reports in the paper about there's a big flow of ice coming our direction from Louisville. And it was a big deal. It could be very destructive to river craft that were out there. It just uh, be, be terrible for the commerce that was wanting to occur to the center. This is early 1900s, uh, and nearly 60,000 people. And the building that says Armistead's, uh, that, is, that is the wharf boat of that era. You can see the river boats just lined up there waiting to take on or let off passengers and freight at our city's, at our city's wharf. Uh, and so this is life in Evansville down on Main Street, you're standing down there on Main Street, basically where Riverside Drive is today. This is what you would experience on a daily, on a daily basis. Uh, so I think it's just really interesting to look back at this and see what that would have been like back in, back in this era. And this is again down in the museum area. Uh, this is the, the mansion that the first museum was in. Uh, obviously an actual mansion to start with. And you can long, look along the riverfront there, and these historic homes that are along Riverside Drive that are, that are still there today, um, the many mansions. Uh, people are living here, uh, in some of the industries here, and people are making money here in Evansville, and some folks are making a lot of money and building some pretty nice places that still remain with us today. And the lumber mill is still basically what would now be the backyard of the, uh, of the Evansville Museum. So we're really fortunate that these types of photographs exist in our collection. And Willard has a fabulous collection, and the University of Southern Indiana Archives also has a very extensive uh, collection of historic photographs. So it's really good that throughout our city, these things are so well documented through our various holdings uh, in, in, our, in Evansville. Sunset Park, quality of life, is sort of the beginning of the progressive era, thinking about making the quality of life better, not only in Evansville, but across the country. So this is basically uh, near where the museum's at today, but they put in a park. Uh, there are reports in the paper, you know, cows used to graze around in this area. And they thought, well, we need to make things better. And so along the river now, we have uh, what was called Sunset Park. And some of us are in the old days down where the casino was. We had Sunrise Park, too. But this was the first version. This is Sunrise, or Sunset Park where people can picnic, and, and particularly on the sun, photographs I've seen from Sunday afternoons, uh, people strolling through the, uh, the Sunset Park area. This is the late 19th century uh, that, this is, that this is occurring. And I'm jumping ahead, but that is what I intended to do next. This is 1907. Uh, river crested a little over 46 feet, and looking in towards downtown, towards Water Street, and you can see uh, 
the steamboats are right basically up next to the uh, uh, to the buildings themselves uh, during this period of time. So it was pretty substantial. Not as substantial as what's going to come up in 1913, and certainly in 1937, a grand area flood. Mm -hmm. This is 1907, and this is basically ooh, just down and across from the museum, just a little ways. Well, to be more specific, this is where the McCurdy Hotel is today. The St. George Hotel was its forerunner. The St. George was the most elegant hotel in Evansville of its period. Uh, hosts a lot of grand events in Evansville. By 1907, it was in its later days. The next decade would see it torn down and the McCurdy built in its place by the same ownership because it had reached the end of its useful life. Uh, Beeman and Sykes is a, a wholesale uh, grocers, a lot of wholesalers along the riverfront because they could ship easily in and out uh, from the river. And so the riverfront is quite active still in this era of 19, 1907. Uh, this is another, this is basically looking at it from Main Street if you're looking in down towards uh, down towards Court Street, down in this direction. And you see the city along Riverside Drive, uh, using today's terminology, but along Water Street, buildings just lying the riverfront in this area. So when people came in on the steamboat, that would have been their first view of Evansville, is our storefronts uh, along our city's riverbank. And there's always some recreation out in the river. You can see boaters out there. Uh, we also had it on, I'm specifically sure what this is, but we'd have showboats that would come in and do shows, you know, musicals or plays or whatever it might be, entertainment boats. And there are also floating chapels that go up and down the river. Evangelists would come and talk and invite people to come down to services uh, aboard a boat uh, that would, would be docked near the, uh, near the Wharf Falls, though. Uh, so we're used to acting on the river as far as entertainment and other uses. They took the, my grandma, they took people from Evansville on excursion boats over to Henderson where it was sandy and they swam. Okay. Yeah. So we don't so have that. So that that one boat is. Yeah. Absolutely. Taking people across. So 1913. Uh, this is a flood that is going to be the biggest flood in Evansville's history to that point. Uh, if you've been down in, uh, where the pagoda is today, the cannon, the Civil War cannon that sits out there, well, that is the Dexter Cannon. Uh, it's in a lot of flood photographs. And sort of, you know, how far did it come up to the cannon? You can see it's right up to the storefronts. That is Water Street. Those are the stores there. So people are down there looking at it. We still do that today when we can get high water. So people walk down and <laughs> look over the edge. That's what they're doing. It's, it's uh, curiosity maybe entertainment in sort of a, a macabre sort of way. Uh, but this is a 1913 flood where it reached over 48 feet, a couple of feet higher than the 1907 flood that came in. About uh, 3,000 people died in this flood, not in Evansville, but across the, uh, the Ohio Valley, and about $50 million in property damage in 1913 dollars. So it was a very destructive flood uh, to the city. During, during this time frame. It brings all kinds of debris and mud and mud. You know, when you walk along the riverfront in New River or in Evansville, in the springtime, you look down there and see all those logs and trash and mud. Well, there's nothing to stop it from going on into where to get to in this era. So it was just a huge mess. So we sort of had this back and forth of the river being a great thing or being, oh my gosh, look what's happening right in front of my tin shop. I've got all this stuff. And there's really nothing you can do about it except waiting for it to recede and start shoveling out the mud. Um, and that's, that's about it. Uh, but you can see there's still you know, commerce up and down, uh, even sites, wholesale grocers, uh, right here again, and other kinds of businesses up and down the Ohio Riverfront. So the riverfront's really a, a place of business for certainly the first century of our of our city's existence. It's another shot of 1913. That's a showboat uh, sitting there to the right. Uh, I, I imagine that we're getting a lot of business at this point. <laughs> but, but, but there they are uh, waiting for that. That's the Golden Rock showboat, actually. That was pretty well known uh, for going up and down the river and bringing in singers and dancers and 
uh, various things that would be performed aboard that particular aboard that particular boat. So there's our friend, the Pagoda. Uh, this is 1913. That's when it comes along. It, it comes along in that year. Uh, you can see the stuff on the river, but people are, this is maybe a Sunday, but you know, people went out back in this area and sort of dressed up. If you're going to go out for a stroll in Sunset Park, you would be dressed up. So maybe a Sunday, but maybe, maybe not. Uh, but you can see people at the top of the Pagoda looking out at the river. And so uh, it's, a, it's a good sort of, I think, illustration of that era and what people were doing on an afternoon. And this is the 1913 riverfront, uh, again, basically across from, uh, from the museum and just down a little ways. Uh, this is uh, where the Bahati uh, Shrine is in this area today. Um, and so that's where we're at. And again, people are out strolling, but you can see there's not, you know, not much separation here. Here's the river and here are the people. <laughs> and so there's a pretty, you know, when the river gets, I don't use the word mad, but when it decides to flow out of this river banks, it's going to do it uh, at that point. And also, watch, this is 1918. 1918 was a rough winter that was over. The biggest snow in January of 1918. My number is 44, 45 inches of snow we got in January of 1918. Our, our record. Great shots of the streetcars going down and you know, snow piled up for feet around them. But out in the river, it was wreaking havoc too, uh, as this ice dam is occurring, which is going to halt shipping on the Ohio River, not too surprisingly. Uh, there, was, there was an ice storage that stretched from Newark down to Howard. Uh, so it was big and it was bad. And, you know, you hear those stories about walking across the Ohio River, 1918, if that's going to happen, that's probably the year uh, that some people remember doing that then. Yeah. yeah. My grandmother had my grandmother and her husband had a, a grocery out of First Avenue that's still there, but anyway, uh, and I've never been I Googled it tried to find but the barges and things spilled coal. Because you know they'd be shifting. Yeah, yeah. Them. And people would go out and pick up the coal and bring it to the grocery and trade it for groceries. <laughs> okay. And that's they, a big story. And they go up and down railroad up. Tracks too that find coal yeah. that fell off, and they called it flickering. Okay. I know. I can't find out why they call it flickering. Yeah, so. don't know. That's yeah. That's that's very interesting. Well, wow. making use of what's there, if you can get it, that's that's excellent. Yeah. So this is 1990, after the ice had receded. We're basically looking at uh, the area down north towards Court Street up today. Uh, Division Street at that point, the division just swung around and came to the river and so as they had a name back in this area, back in this era. And uh, uh, we have both Evansville sand and gravel in this shot and also the Nugent sand and gravel. Those were big operations. The walls are still operating down there and that's a similar type of business. But that's a big business they can get out of the river and, and use it for various, various, uh, various reasons. So we reached over 85,000 people by 1920. Obviously, this is the post-World 